Hello, my friend. In this video, we are discussing business agility, how to pivot quickly by getting great ideas from frontline people. The clip is from an interview we did with Karen Hurt, author of Courageous Cultures. This is Business Leadership Today. I'm your host, Matt Tenney. All right. So yeah, first, let me give you a little bit of context because I had been in HR for the first decade of my career at Verizon. So leadership development, organizational development, training, everything but comp. Then I moved into call centers and 95% of my team were women. And then I get moved into leading a 2200 person sales team. Now, here's the thing. I had never sold anything except for some Girl Scout cookies. And I wasn't even particularly good at that. 13 out of 14 of my direct reports were men. 14 out of 14 had been in retail sales for their entire career. Oh, man. And they are looking at me like, why are you here? Exactly. (laughs) You know, and so, but that actually wasn't the really tricky situation. What Mm. was really a problem was that all of a sudden, out of the blue, this thing called the iPhone has, uh, has, is on the market and Verizon is not allowed to sell it. Uh, so AT&T has exclusive rights. You may, may remember this time. Some of your listeners may remember this time. So there, there are lines of customers coming out of my doors in all my stores. I had 110 stores. But they weren't there to buy phones. They were there to find out when their contract was up <laughs> so they could port their line to at and Oh, man. And my team is looking at me like, we have nothing to sell. Mm. They were so demoralized. And now they've got this new leader and they, you know, they don't believe in her. And so it's, it, was, it was really a, one of the most challenging situations of my career. But I know one thing, right? I did not have a lot of sales experience, but I I do know about culture and I do know about leading large teams. And I know one thing about salespeople. If they think they can't sell, they can't sell, (laughs) right? So we had to change their mindset. Right. So I thought, okay, so of all these people, somebody must be selling something, right? So I asked my data (laughs) guy to give me the list of the 10 top salespeople. And I just started following them around and watching what they were doing. Mm. And I ran into a guy named Yomi. Now, Yomi was doing one thing consistently. He was asking every single customer, where do you work? Mm. And I said, Yomi, why do you do that? Is that just to, you know, build rapport? You'd be nice, make a connection. He's like, oh no, Karen, totally strategic. You see, Verizon didn't used to have good small business plans everybody's lines are with Sprint, but now we do. We are the best value in town. So Mm. what happens is somebody is coming into the store to port their personal line to (laughs) AT&T. But if I can find out that there is a business phone, because most people are afraid of this new thing called the iPhone for business for security reasons, if I can find out there is another phone in their pocket, I am bringing over five, 10, 20 lines at a time. Mm. I don't care about the personal lines. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I went back and I talked to my district managers and I said, Yomi's figured it out. And they went, oh, Karen, Yomi is Yomi. He's been our best salesperson forever. He could sell ice to Eskimos. We've tried the small business thing. It will never work. Mm. So now- Here's where you show up when I'm talking about one of my key principles for building culture, which is show up with confident humility. So I had did not know I had to have the humility to know they might be right. This might not work. Right. Right. Humility. So Mm -hmm. I can't tell them this is the new strategy, but I have to show up with some level of confidence or they're not going to try it at all. Right. So I said, here's the thing. I don't know if this is going to be our long term strategy, but what I do know is on next Tuesday, Every single one of our employees is going to ask every single customer, where do they work? (laughs) Wow. Okay. It will be a requirement. I am, this is my expectation, right? So came out strong. And then I said, so we're going to make it like, feel like a holiday because when you're changing culture, if you're going to up the accountability, you also have to up the fun, right? Right. So we made it feel like a holiday. We put Red Bull in the back of all of our trucks. We made sure that... (laughs) 
all hit. We hit all 110 stores. We put balloons in the stores. We dressed in costumes and went in the back before the stores opened. I did like these pep rally things. I did training to make sure everybody understood. Here's the thing. On that day, our sales quadrupled. Not our sales of just small business, our total line sold, quadrupled, a random Tuesday. So I got everybody, the entire region, anybody who was working that next day on a conference call. And I said, here's the thing. If it can work on a random Tuesday, it can work any day. Mm. And then confidence. This is our new strategy (laughs) and this is what we're going to do. And, you know, then from there, we did a lot of different things to, you know, really reinforce the training, give people the skills, practice, uh, made it be our most important thing, created clarity that selling to small business, asking every customer where they work was really, really vital. Now, here's the thing that got to, when I started there, we we were like 2% of our sales were from small business. We got to 8% of our sales were from small business, which is decent, but then we kind of plateaued. So mm. here's where we do what we'll, we talk about in the book of practicing the principle where, okay, you might need to do this different in different markets. Mm. So in Roanoke, uh, Virginia, you can't do the same things that you're doing in Washington, DC. Right. And so we gave every team the opportunity and the leeway to think about their strategy, how they, so we were clear about, you have to sell small business, how you sell it is up to you. Come back and pitch your ideas. So in Washington, DC, they said, you know, we got, well, you know, lawyers, we got lawyers. That's who our small businesses are right. and lawyers and lobbyists. They don't want to come into a Verizon store and deal with a guy in a polo shirt, <laughs> right. right? So we gave people a stipend. They asked for a stipend of a couple hundred dollars so that the people could dress more professionally mm. so that there was more of a B2B sale. But in Cedar Bluff, Virginia, which is my only log cabin store, you don't want <laughs> suits, right? Because you've got farmers and contractors, people who really care about their businesses, and they want to be taken seriously and treated as professionals. So right. we, what we did was we changed the, um, the store and the, this log cabin had a loft at the top and we made a small business center. So these professional farmers and contractors could come in, have a snack. We could review their plans and they were treated with deep respect. That became our largest small business store. Oh, wow. So that's the practice, the principle, right? Giving people, once you've created clarity about what it is that you're doing with the culture, then giving people ownership to, to be involved in co-creating that. So the end of the story is that when I was promoted out of that role, we were leading the, the nation. We won the president's award for our customer growth. That demoralized sales team was now the winning revenue team. We hope you found this video valuable. If you did, please hit that like button so this video can help other people too. We love getting feedback, so please leave a comment below letting us know what you found most helpful in this video. If you'd like to listen to the entire 30 minute interview, please visit Business Leadership Today The link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and opt in for notifications. Until next time, I wish you great success building a world-class organization that makes a positive impact in the lives of team members and in our world.